Now, how many of you have the curiosity to understand how the retention of the solute gets happened onto the gas chromatography type me in the chat box? Let us talk about you know these five different mechanisms by which the solute can get retained onto the stationary phase. What is the first one? The first one is called as the dispersion forces or the London dispersion forces. Now, what is that LDF's role and how it actually acts? Let us talk about the fundamentals, why the dispersion force does exist. And for that reason, you know, we need to understand how the electron gets revolved around the nucleus. So how the nucleus uh, electrons gets revolved around the nucleus, it will get, you know, revolved in such a way that the distribution will be equal across the nucleus. So that there is no discrimination about one electron between the second one. The equal distribution of the electron is going to happen across the nucleus. Now, this is the ideal situation. And let me show you with the help of a diagram. I hope you are now able to see the diagram where there is a symmetrical distribution seen across the nucleus. Can you see this? Symmetrical distribution onto the left side. <clears throat> but there comes a moment, there comes a time situation where the distribution of electron gets little unsymmetrical. And this happens because of the electron cloud. If there are less number of electrons, the nucleus will have a control hold on to the electron. But as the number of electrons get increases, the population gets increases, the control get lost. And the same thing happens in this case also. If you grow with the number of electrons, the atomic size becomes bigger and the nucleus will not have the complete control on to the electrons movement. Now, electrons are very, very volatile commodity and electrons can have a tendency to get accommodated at one side or the another. Now, this is called as the dipole. Can you see the dipole into the second figure over here? Plus delta and minus delta. Now, why this dipole got induced? Because of the unsymmetrical distribution of the electrons. Why the unsymmetrical distribution of the electrons occur? Because of the higher number of electrons and not having the control of the nucleus on them. So they get unsymmetrical distributed and the region area where there are more number of electrons accommodated that will have which charge? Absolutely, electron carries negative charge and hence that particular side will have slightly minus delta charge. And as the opposite side is going to be, opposite side means where the electrons are accumulated, opposite to that, that area will be deficient for the electrons. There will be minimum electrons or no electrons at all. And what is going to be the charge onto the another side? Will it be negative or positive? I'm sure you must be able to understand that it is going to be positive, the electron deficient size. Now this minus delta and plus delta, they are two different charges. They are called as the dipole. The two poles are instantaneously got generated. This is called as the now, what is going to happen next? So do you think that this one atom is going to sit back and relax and it is not going to influence its surrounding atoms? What is going to happen according to you? Can this atom also influence the neighboring atoms? And how? This negative side of this atom is going to attract the positive side of the another atom. And then look what happens. Now, can you see this? Minus delta of the one atom is going to attract, is going to have the force of attraction because opposite charges attracts each other. Right? So the plus delta of the another atom will have the attraction towards the minus delta of the another atom. And that force is called as what? That force of attraction is called as a dispersion forces 
or the London dispersion forces. I hope you understand, type U in the chat box if you now understood how the London dispersion forces comes into an existence, right? So what are the characteristics of the London dispersion forces? And here they are. Larger the molecule, greater the attraction or greater will be the retention. Now, what is the basis of saying this? If the molecule is larger, the London dispersion force will be stronger. Now, just imagine if you have a nucleus with two electrons. If a nucleus having three electrons, now this nucleus will have a fold of these two or three electrons with the utmost force. But in case if the number of electrons increases to 30, if the number of electrons increases to 100, will the nucleus have the same capacity of fold onto the larger number of electrons? Type yes or no in the chat box. I'm just moving slowly because I don't want anyone to lose what is the reason behind that. So it will not have, it will not have that stronger hold onto the more number of electrons. Suppose you are a leader and you have 10, uh, two people working for you under you. Now you can have the very good attention over these two people, the two scientists or chemists working with you. Tomorrow, your manager says that, for example, Murnal is the group leader. And Murnal, now you have to lead a team of 100 scientists. Will Murnal able to give the same kind of attention that she was able to give with the two scientists? And now he has to give the attention to the 100 scientists. Will be Murnal equally attentive for the 100 scientists? Answer is absolutely no. So there can be some scientists who may not follow the rules and guidance. There can be nonsense is happening within the team that is going to lose the control of Brunal over the bigger team. This scientist can go across and that's where the polarization happens. That's where the poles get created. So the greater is the electrons means the greater is the molecular size. So if the greater becomes the molecular size, the fold of the nucleus onto those electrons will become weak. And these electrons can have their freedom of getting polarized, getting delocalized. And that is going to create the stronger attractions. That is going to create the different poles, the two different poles, <clears throat> minus delta and plus delta. And because of that, the force of attraction will be also more between the two molecules. And hence you say that the larger is the molecular size, the larger will be the force of attraction between the two atoms or two molecules. Now, if there is a larger attraction, just imagine that one molecule belongs to stationary phase and the another molecule is your actual solute molecule. So if these two molecules have the greater degree of attraction, will this molecule retain for longer time or will this molecule retain for shorter time? I need answer in the chat box. <clears throat> Absolutely, this molecule is going to retain for the longer time because force of attraction is too strong. It is not going to leave the molecule from the stationary phase. And now I would like you to think over this example. What shall be the order of illusion if London dispersion forces is governing retention? Forget about another phenomenon now. I don't want you to think about another phenomenon. Just focus that the London dispersion forces. Retention, what is meaning of retention? Retention means the compound gets interact with the stationary phase. And as a part of that, it eludes out of the column. So when the compound eludes out of the column, that is defined by the retention time. I hope you understand Mathan Gopal. Hmm? What is my retention? So retention indicates a retention onto the column. So what shall be the order of illusion if the London dispersion forces is the governing body who govern the retention, octane, hexane, and heptane. So according to you, according to you, which compound is going to elute first? Will heptane elute first or octane elute first or the hexane elute first? Now understand the rule over here. 
larger the molecular size, the greater will be the attraction. So first understand within this hexane, octane, heptane, which one is the smallest one and which one is the largest one? You will find that the hexane is the smallest one. So the smallest means what? The lesser amount of interaction. But in case if the larger one means the larger amount of interaction. So which molecule is going to elute first? Is the hexane. Who is going to elute first? Now what is the molecule which is going to elute, elute at the end? Which is retained for the longer time? Is it heptane or the octane? Now, he hexane has already eluted. So within the heptane and octane, which one is having the larger molecular size? And the octane wins with this time. And hence octane being a larger molecule will have the larger London dispersion forces and hence the larger amount of interaction with the stationary phase. Thank you so much. So now understand, you know, in which case the London dispersion forces are predominantly going to be the retention mechanisms. In what case? In case, if there are no electronegative atoms present into a molecule. See, electronegative atoms actually polarize the molecule. Yes or no? If there is oxygen present, it can polarize the molecule. But in case if there is no such electronegative atoms present, right, there will be no permanent dipole available onto the given molecule. In case if there is no double bond, no pi bond, no lone pair of electrons present, like uh, hydrocarbons or saturated hydrocarbons, can you see over here hexane, octane, heptane, they all are saturated hydrocarbons. They do not have any electronegative atoms. There is no presence of double bond. All are covalent bond. So this is, this is called as a non-polar entities. They are not the polar entities. So make sure that the London dispersion forces are very prominent only in case of non-polar molecules, where there is no presence of electronegative atoms, where there is no atom with the lone pair of electron when there is no pi bond exist there is the hydrocarbons but saturated hydrocarbons like alkanes so alkane these all are what the alkane so alkane is the good example of non polar entities so you have to understand that this london dispersion forces come stronger with the non polar molecules like alkanes what is the second Characteristic. First, we talked about the larger molecular size, larger will be the London dispersion forces. The second one is the larger the surface area, the greater the attraction and greater will be the retention. As we talked about the molecular size, we are also going to talk about the surface area. Now, when the interaction can be more, when the surface area is more because of the available surface area, you can have the better interaction. And let us talk about the example over here. So assume that the London dispersion forces is the force behind your retention mechanism. And what is going to happen on to the retention of n-pentane, isopentane and neopentane. So let me show you a diagram over here for you understand and better judge which molecule is going to have the bigger surface area. Let us talk about the surface area first. The moment you understand the surface area, you can easily make out which compound will elute first and which will elute last. So you have the structure of the pentane onto your screen, isopentane and the neopentane. So which compound you feel is more compact in the nature? Compact means what? The lower surface area. Is it a pentane, isopentane or neopentane? Now, don't go with the diagrams because those diagrams can confuse you. But it is a newer pentane which is most compact in the nature. And hence, the surface area of the new pentane will be smaller as compared to isopentane or as compared to pentane or the N pentane. You understand that the pentane is having the bigger surface area. So, what do you think? If the pentane is having the bigger surface area, 
what is going to happen on to the retention time of the painting whether it will be a smaller amongst them or the larger amongst them thank you so much i really appreciate the response sai sahina thank you so much so the end pentane being a higher in surface area is going to elute late now we are comparing the surfaces across the retention time so these two properties again dependent on to for only the non polar molecules 